Okay, I have to thank you, Dr. Margolis, because his presentation fits very well with mine. I have to go now straight to say uh, what is a, a liquid biopsy uh, in the case uh, of our studies. So I have no conflict of interest for this talk. So this is the only uh, uh, diagram regarding microparticles I'm showing to you because obviously uh, by now you know very well what they are. So in our uh, case, uh, because we're interested in uh, uh, analyzing the uh, cardiovascular system, it's good to know that all circulating cells and vascular cells and even cardiomyocytes can release uh, these microvesicles. Now, uh, it's, uh, it's important to consider that the function are biomarkers, the liquid biopsy concept, but also cellular uh, crosstalk mediators, as you already saw. So, in a way, we uh, are opening a new uh, field to trying to understand what, what these uh, small uh, particles are doing to uh, maintain the process of arterial thrombosis or, or even the continuation of arterial thrombosis. So, therefore, the concept is, well, we have these microvesicles. They have been reported for many years as a, as a debris. Initially, it was considered a debris seen by a microscope but with no mu much content, but are they involved in the clinical manifestations associated to cardiology? That was the question we posed to ourselves a few years ago. Now, obviously we know very well how cardiovascular disease progresses, and we know the different factors that have an important effect on the manifestation as uh, flow, so shear conditions in the different areas of the vasculature, uh, the uh, thrombogenicity of the vascular wall when it starts developing an atherosclerotic plaque, and eventually all the different cells that have a role in the composition of this thrombi. Now, obviously, this is, um, my previous slide was centering in the complications, right? But obviously, to reach the complications, we have the development of atherosclerosis, this silent disease that is progressing, and in many instances, we have patients of intermediate risk for which we don't have biomarkers or biochemical markers that can predict the appearance of the disease. So we are confronted with, we know the high risk patients, we have other possibilities, we know the low risk patients, but the intermediate patients, those that develop uh, 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 the syndrome without uh, any, any advice, uh, previous advice, are of a consideration for us. Therefore, we uh, uh, initiated different types of studies that, as I would like to show to you. Uh, to start with, we should know that in the circulation, the highest number of microparticles come from platelets. Here we have uh, control patients. 81% uh, of the platelets in, the, in blood come from platelets. And in uh, familial hypercholesterolemia patients, these patients are patients that have a genetic disorder in uh, the LDL receptor, in the receptor for the uh, internalization of LDL, and therefore they have, during all their lives, very high levels of cholesterol in blood. These patients have presentation of disease an average of 15 years before the, the general population. Therefore, these are very high risk patients. So in these patients, 75% of macroparticles come from uh, platelets because they have an increase in the number of microparticles micro coming both from endothelial cells and from leukocytes. As I was mentioned before, we are not following our studies with the number of microparticles because we believe it is important to identify the parental cell that is releasing the microparticles. Where are they coming from? And therefore, we have chosen a, a platform of different antibodies by which we can identify where the platelet has been released from, if it's an endothelial cell, a platelet, or a white cell. So with this uh, uh, situation, I'm going to start you, uh, showing you data on familiar hypercholesterolemia patients. So, uh, as you see, if we were looking for thrombosponding carrying microvesicles, we, the, the, the amount of microvesicles that we could detect in the HFH patients was, were significantly higher. And these are coming from platelets. But then we look into activated platelets, those platelets that are ready to attach to substrates. We analyze PAG1 and the uh, 
those microparticles that were positive for PAG1 and CD62 P, meaning that this is a platelet and a PAG1 is the receptor to which we have form of the receptor. Therefore, in, two, in both cases, these microparticles in familiar hypercholesterolemic patients were increased. Therefore, these patients that are treated as per guideline, this is a cohort of, of uh, FH patients in Spain, it's a registry, we have over 4,000 patients already genetically characterized and we are following them. Therefore, you see that although they are clinically uh, followed with all the guidelines, with the following the, the, the maximum of, of pharmacological treatment available for these patients, they have activated platelets because they release these microparticles. Then we went into the identification of these microparticles if they were able to carry tissue factor, because we know that tissue factor is a, is a protein that is able to trigger the process of thrombosis. And as you see here, clearly, these microparticles were tissue factor positive. So either if we look into the CD142 uh, epitope, that is tissue factor, as well as if this tissue factor was carried by platelets or was carried by monocytes. In all instances, tissue factor positive microparticles were circulating in these patients. Next, we did a super study in these HFH patients by uh, analyzing, by imaging the status of atherosclerotic plaque in the aorta. So in this group of patients, we could characterize the type of plaques. So we characterize non-lipidic plaques and lipidic plaques. And as you see here in this panel, the uh, non-lipidic uh, uh, carrying or having subjects, uh, subjects that didn't have uh, lipid uh, plaques had less plated-derived microparticles than those patients that had lipidic-rich plaques. It was a significant difference. So uh, the same was true for uh, markers of uh, microparticles derived from platelets, again, non-lipid-rich plaques versus lipid-rich plaques, and TSP1, non-lipidic uh, uh, plaques versus lipid-rich plaques. In all instances, these patients with plaques that are uh, lipid-rich have more microparticles that are, uh, let's say, uh, more proactive uh, for thrombosis. And the same was for tissue factor carrying uh, microparticles, as I showed you before, uh, for all patients. Uh, in a specific case of patients with a lipid rich plaque, uh, the amount of tissue factor uh, carrying uh, platelet derived and monocyte derived microparticles uh, was significantly increased. Now, it is clear that we also wanted to see total uh, plaque burden. And in this uh, study uh, on, uh, on magnetic uh, resonance, uh, we also analyze carotid plaques. We didn't analyze coronary plaques in those patients, but these two. And we saw that when we measure total plaque burden, we have the more tissue factor carrying positive microparticles in those uh, with a higher amount of plaque burden. So they are potentially at risk, these patients, because they are having not only these plaques that are potentially uh, a candidate for rapture, if they are in the aorta, it's difficult that they will produce a clinical event, but nevertheless they will be uh, uh, in association to these microparticles that are going to create a protobotic uh, state. We analyze if these uh, tissue factor carrying microparticles were in direct association to procoagulant activity of tissue factor. Because as you know, a tissue factor is an antigen devoid of uh, procoagulant activity, but also if it's lipidated, it's, it's procoagulant. So we measure both, and it was a direct correlation between them. So therefore we were learning slowly how these patients, although they are treated as per guidelines, still had a high risk of developing events. Now, we did uh, an analysis considering the possibility of incorporating this, ma this mark, this as a biomarker. You, you have here, this is the Roca core analysis. This is uh, for risk uh, classical risk factors. This is the core that we got for this group of patients. It's a lot of, it's segmented because our population is still low. 
So this was a uh, kind of discovery project. We have to validate with higher number of patients. But this is this is what we got for these patients for the Framingham score. And this is when we add tissue factor rich microparticles coming from platelets to the equation. So the increase was highly significant. We passed from 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. And this is this is the line the, of the road curve. Therefore, we have this jump in a specificity for identifying the, the possibility of developing an event, so the risk of the patients. Now, after learning this situation with patients uh, with uh, HFH, uh, we decided to see uh, if patients in the acute phase of myocardial infarction were going to be able to be followed by a, a similar strategy. So what we did is to initiate a study by which we got uh, blood from STEMI patients, uh, we got intracoronary blood and also peripheral blood at the same time, because uh, this is part of a, another study where we were characterizing the thrombus in the coronary, so this uh, Patients were from, uh, had aspiration of the thrombi, therefore after aspiration we got the coronary blood, peripheral blood at the same time, and then we had two groups for comparison. We had uh, healthy controls and we had post-MI patients 72 hours after the event. And we analyzed microparticles in a liquid biopsy approach in all these groups of patients. So what we found is that endothelial derived microparticles are significantly increased in STEMI patients. So in addition of thrombus, they have endothelial damage. And this is something that it's, it's, um, it's uh, we knew that endothelium was being damaged by the, the niche of a thrombus, and also because for developing a thrombus, you need to have endothelial dysfunction in many cases, or even the, the endothelium is absent because there is rupture. Therefore, this is uh, it's tentatively acceptable. Then what we saw is that post MI, there was a significant reduction in, in this circulating endothelial derived uh, microparticles, but it was still higher levels than in control situation. What happened for leukocytes? So we saw that le uh, leukocytes detected by a pan antibody against leukocytes is CD45, detects all white cells. We saw that there was an increase from control to STEMI to post MI. So Post the MI, these microparticles were still released in high numbers. And we went into identification of different uh, uh, lineages of white cells. So the lymphocytes derived white cells were going down 72 hours afterwards, and the monocytes were going down. And we don't know at this point this is still going. We think eosinophils may be the ones producing this uh, still increase that we find with the pan antibody. So, systemic blood uh, microparticles have a signature in terms of parental cell origin that discriminate patients that are suffering an acute uh, STEMI event. Now, the same applies to what I said before. These are discovery studies. Before applying this into clinical arena, we have to have more uh, studies with a higher number of patients to be able to prove that the concept really stands the, uh, the challenge of the high number and the variability. So we uh, also analyze uh, the, the, the time effect. So as you know, the time that a thrombi is sitting in a coronary artery has a prognostic value for the, for the patient. Therefore, we want it in, in terms of microparticles as well as in general terms of the composition of the thrombi, what are the differences between thrombi that can be released within the frame of acute PCI of, uh, uh, and also thrombus that are for a longer period of time in the coronary. And we were able to find differences in microparticle release. So microparticles are very sensitive to detect what's happening at the, in the coronary area. So you see here, for example, monocyte microparticles were really higher in those thrombi that had less than three hours of development versus those of uh, higher than three hours. And the same uh, is true for microparticles derived from monocytes that were 
complicated by two, uh, complicated or were better targeted by two antibodies, CD14 and CD11B. So the monocytes are going down in numbers. We know that uh, for, from, from histological analysis of, of, the, of the thrombus, but nevertheless, in the peripheral circulation, we also have an idea of what's happening at the level of, of the coronary circulation. And the same goes true for endothelial cell derived microparticles. So as time goes with the thrombi in situ in the coronary uh, vessel, the number of uh, uh, endothelial derived microparticles goes down. So the acute phase is the worst in terms of what's happening. And therefore, that's why we have to remove the thrombi the sooner the better. Because the longer the thrombus stays in the coronary, the complication of the niche of where the thrombus is growing is significant. Now, can we go peripherally with this? Because in this case, was a blood in the coronary artery. Well, we cannot. So we cannot use this marker, endothelial derived microparticles, because when we go into peripheral blood, we don't have this specificity. So this is not a marker to go into blood taken by the, in the peripheral to detect what's happening. So endothelial derived microparticles are not the response. But uh, we could pursue the idea that we have to have microparticles that stand, that is, the release is so important that might reach the, the, the peripheral circulation. So uh, what we did is to follow a tissue factor in these patients. This was the design, STEMI patients undergoing PCI versus controls, and then uh, going into the peripheral blood, we saw that tissue factor positive uh, uh, microparticles were raised in the peripheral blood, and also this tissue factor uh, rich microparticles are able to discriminate between patients with one vessel versus uh, two vessel disease, more than two vessels. So, tissue factor rich microparticles are maybe a way to go, and we are uh, getting deeper and deeper in this analysis because maybe they are a marker in the peripheral circulation of what's going on in the coronaries. And also, we wanted to see if uh, the, uh, the, um, the effect could be uh, really also with different types of biomarkers, and we, in every single case, we had the similar result. Therefore, we, there are many other uh, measurements, as uh, these are monocytes versus platelets versus activated platelets versus endothelium, and you see peripheral versus coronary, the only stand is for, in this case, for the uh, platelet, uh, plate, uh, an activated platelet um, uh, uh, microparticles, not for endothelium, as we said before in the previous design, and also, and also we could measure in this case with these PCI paper, uh, patients that uh, monocyte derived microparticles reach significance, but possibly this uh, significance is very little to be, to be able to have a clinical uh, sound. So therefore we are concentrating in this PAM, uh, so uh, platelet derived microparticles that are enriched in tissue fiber. But we went into looking into additional ones. And then we decided to understand what happened with red blood cells. Red blood cells are very important in number in the, in the, in the, in the thrombi. Uh, and they have been little uh, uh, studies approaching uh, red blood cells, uh, not in microparticles, uh, in anything. Uh, and they are active cells, although they don't have a nucleus, they are active cells. Uh, active but in this case, uh, this is a study, what we wanted uh, is to see if uh, we could measure uh, in the peripheral blood the development of thrombi in the coronary artery. And this is glycophorin A. This is the, the epitope we were analyzing with an antibody. And it, you see here, control versus STEMI versus post-STEMI, there is a clear uh, separation in number of microparticles that we could measure in the peripheral circulation. And when we applied the rock curve analysis again, this was highly uh, a predictor of the, the development of a thrombi within the coronaries. Again, this was not uh, with a huge number of, uh, of patients, and we are, we are developing further studies to have a, a validation of this initial discovery data. So the effluent post-thrombus blood is enriched with this uh, uh, glycophorin A uh, microparticles that also show an increased thrombin generating capacity. We went into uh, documenting uh, these results uh, using a perfusion chamber I developed uh, many years ago uh, that allows to study what's happening when thrombus is growing into, uh, into a, a, a substrate and collect blood after the thrombi 
and before the thrombi and be able to compare those, those two types of blood. And there we could measure that the, th the thrombin activity was directly related to the amount of glycophorin carrying microparticles. Because this thrombi growing on the plant, on the uh, my chamber, they are uh, a complete, complete uh, thrombi. So they have red blood cells, platelets, white cells, and the erythrocytes are able to secrete these microparticles that may become a marker. So this has a lot of interest, a lot, a lot of potential, and we are going to follow this path. Identify those patients that are developing a thrombi before the full appearance of a myocardial infarction maybe happens. This, this morning we had this, this, um, this presentation, a very interesting presentation on the definition of myocardial infarction. But we are really missing biomarkers that can tell us when we have an stable angina versus if we have, well, type 2 non-estable elevation myocardial infarction. And the, the possibilities are diverse and it was shown, but we are very scarce in biomarkers. Therefore, we have to put our interest in trying to identify possibilities. Microparticles are one, others are other type of uh, biomarkers that we have to be studying in the near future. So, is an association or is a causal factor? This question remains. I mean, it was asked before by Dr. Crea indirectly the same thing to uh, Professor Margolis. When we, we are finding in a condition we have microparticles and we have the, the, the condition we are studying, it could be an association and not causal relation. So, to, to, to answer to this question, we did this is a study using the perfusion chamber. So what we did is to perfuse healthy blood from donors uh, in comparison to the same blood with added microparticles. And we wanted to study the amount of thrombus that was being developed in eroded vessel wall and also in atherosclerotic lesions that can be presented to blood in the perfusion chamber. And there we study different shear rates. In this case, we use a shear rate that is 16, 19 per seconds, three times a uh, three minutes of perfusion and a flow rate of 10, 10 milliliters per minute. Therefore, we, we know very well how, how thrombus grow in these conditions, and we could analyze pre and post microparticles. This is the type of plaques that we, what we call erosion. This is what we present. And these are the results. So the number of platelets that were recruited on the substrate in the presence of microparticles was significantly higher than the amount of platelets deposited on the growing thrombi without microparticles, and this is the same block. Therefore, the presence of microparticles had a functional effect on thrombus growth. But not only that, we also wanted to analyze uh, what happened if we uh, put not circulating microvesicles, but platelet-derived microparticles. And this is this, this uh, next uh, diagram. Uh, so this is the effect uh, of circulating uh, microvesicles uh, without characterization. Uh, and this is the effect uh, of platelet-derived uh, microvesicles. We believe they are carrying tissue factor uh, and possibly has a role in this increase in thrombus formation that we find in this situation. Now we analyze also fibrin deposition. Uh, thrombi and vivo are, com are complex. Uh, 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 products are not plated at only. So we wanted to see if we had an effect that was associated to fiber information, also because it's tissue factor dependent. And as you see here in this case, what we perfused was human atherosclerotic plaque, perfused by uh, uh, normal blood, this is not patient blood, this is normal blood, but, the, but nevertheless, this is the situation, this is platelets for comparison, and this is fibrin, uh, and this is whole blood, and this is microparticle and rich blood. And this is the quantification. Therefore, even before we saw in damaged vessel wall, here we see in atherosclerotic plaque, and in both conditions, platelet number and fibrin deposition increase if the perfusion blood is carrying microparticles. This is uh, another type of, uh, of study. I mean, we, when we published this, we got uh, many questions asking us to do different approaches. And this is another perfusion chamber. This is a flat chamber in which we can perfuse isolated proteins. In this case, it's collagen, one of the most important proteins in the vessel wall. And again, you see the fact 
обратите внимание, это непокрин, а и вот воздействие contributing to the growth of the, of the thrombotic mass. Therefore, the remaining question is how these microparticles that come from platelets that have uh, uh, carry epitopes of PAG1, so the 2B3 receptor, and uh, carry other products like tissue factor, are contributing to this growth of the thrombi. They are here, they are here for something. So next step will be to identify how these microparticles that are in the mesh of the growing thrombi are producing the increase in platelet deposition and thrombus on um, So I think I have gone through all these uh, possibilities. We are really thinking that uh, the microparticles can identify patients at intermediate risk that are able to suffer uh, an event pretty quickly as the HFH patients. These patients, they are treated with a statin therapy as per guidelines, very well treated as a registry, and nevertheless, they have these microparticles being released coming from leukocytes, coming from platelets. Now, it means that although the, the plasma LDL levels were normalized, they reached the levels that were desired, objective, or a little bit higher, still they had ongoing cell activation because these cells were releasing these microparticles as a product of activation. So these patients still have a process that is not at this moment in their lives, not associated to the LDL, the circulating LDL, maybe to the fact that they have been since birth exposed to high level of LDL and they were not treated until other age. We are exploring now this possibility. But the fact is that they are not protected. So we, have, we need more possibilities of protection for these patients. And then in the acute phase, as you have seen until now, we are just trying to identify how they affect growing of the thrombus and also if they can be used for as, as biomarkers. And I have a la a, the last piece of information Oh, this is, sorry, I went back. I went back. Yes, I went back. Okay, here. This is the last piece of information. So in these patients with HFH, we have at the, at the present uh, 95 events. So 95 events versus uh, patients, uh, sorry, patients with events, 95, versus patients without events, 48. We have the sample of these 143 patients, take it at, at inclusion, and we follow them for 3.2 uh, years. So we, we wanted to challenge the system, and we say, well, let's see which microparticles at entry time can predict the appearance of an event. And as an event, we consider in a stable angina, myocardial infarction, sudden death, and so on. So, when we did this, this exercise and this is preliminary data, this is unpublished and we presented this at the, at the European Society of Cardiology meeting, you see that we have some microparticles that are already coming with a positive result three years before of the event. And these are <coughs> annexin 5 positive, this would classify all of them by annexin 5. Those carrying lymphocyte biomarkers, uh, epitopes in the surface, uh, those carrying monocytes, uh, and those carrying uh, lymphocyte microparticles, uh, uh, 
microvesicles y were not significant. And I'm saying CD3 was not significant because we thought that these CD3 particles were uh, showing some effect when we looked into patients uh, with shorter distance. So therefore, what are we learning here? This is a learning process. So in the pathophysiology of the, 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 the evolution of disease in these patients of the, of the plant, that the leukocytes are important. We have ongoing uh, inflammation in these patients because the, 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 the pan-lymphocyte and the uh, monocyte uh, epitopes are in the surface and is significant. Therefore, uh, we think that in these patients we need to, to, to do something else with HFH the, uh, patients because this ha they have this ongoing thrombosis uh, not prevented uh, by the treatment, uh, the conventional uh, treatment presently uh, that is acetamide uh, 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 statins uh, from statins uh, and acetamide. Uh, so therefore, uh, this, we are getting information uh, also of the evolution uh, of the pathophysiology uh, of atherosclerosis uh, understanding uh, which are the cells uh, that are releasing uh, microparticles uh, that characterize uh, atherosclerosis. Uh, Uh, so I uh, I think that with this I am finishing. Uh, yeah, I'm leaving the pharmacology uh, for the next year uh, yeah, or the next uh, uh, two or three years. We are working on that. We have uh, preliminary data, but I think that we should really analyze it uh, more in depth our results before going and presenting it publicly. I think that they are carriers. We saw that they, they carry microRNAs. They carry many other proteins. We have done proteomics of these microvesicles, and we are, we are starting to learn what they, they carry. They carry many different proteins, and I think that uh, if we complicate this with infections, as it was shown before, even if we higher the number of potential microvesicles in the circulation, we have to be really careful and also skeptical why not we have to be skeptical of the findings we have to analyze them with a lot of uh, uh, care to be able to avoid spurious results but nevertheless i think that we have a way to go i think all these cells that are part of the cardiovascular process are releasing microparticles when they send they have a perturbation that tells that the cell is inflamed the cell is becoming apoptotic the cell is becoming epoxy the cell is becoming altered by any injury that can be associated to the origin of disease, this alteration and perturbation modify the membranes, and the membranes are able to bleb into these microvesicles. Some of these cells can progress to die, others not, others recover, but nevertheless, the perturbation can be measured, and this is what is important. We, have, we are starting to have a measurement of the perturbation of cells. Maybe the big things we have already discovered, the future The future is in finding these small changes that are going to explain to us the residual risk that we have in the patients, although they are perfectly treated by conventional treatment. Thank you very much for your attention, and I will thank the people who have contributed, the Familia Hypercholesterolemia Foundation, and the group of, uh, of, the, uh, the, uh, of my hospital, and the group that has done all the analysis, Rosa Suarez uh, mainly. Thank you very much for your attention.